Hey, this is Coach's Corner presented by X Rocker. I'm Brian Saint, head coach of the Minnesota Rocker. And today we're going to be going into some, you know, general tips and tricks for Tuscan S and D. So Tuscan S and D is also a S and D map in this game, which is very heavily favored toward one bomb site, and that one on a on this map is the A bomb site. What makes the A bomb site so good for the attacking team is the A the post plant positions, and B just the fact that the attacking team kind of gets to the this outside uh, courtyard area before the defense. So we'll kind of start things from the offensive side here first. Offense, you're going to spawn, you know, back here behind the well. And a lot of the times on offense, you're trying to contest middle map and you're trying to contest the outer lane over here. You can work a lot of snipe picks here as well. Kind of catch someone peeking here late or peeking behind that back little stone since you'll beat them. You just got to be aware of the other team kind of throwing some stuns and nades back here because that's, their, that's the defense's best chance to kind of get some picks on you. Also with offense, you're going to get to mid-map a little bit faster than defensive teams, so you'll see a lot of teams on offense try and take that mid-map mid control first because if you get mid, it should completely open up the A-bomb site for you. One rushing mid, one thing I like doing um, is throwing a Ganon bomb in the front turret store. You know, I have a normal nade here right now. Uh, which is a little bit too slow when rushing mid. So if you have a Ganon Bomb and throw it into that door when you're rushing mid, it kind of stops the defensive team from peeking at a church or pushing at a church to contest you mid. It should allow you to get relatively easy uh, mid-map control to start the round. Once you get mid-map control and you get uh, a long control, the plant should be all yours. I do not recommend going from uh, this side of the arch to go for the plant as you open yourself up to bottom church and both angles of top church can kind of give the defensive team an easy kill on you. So once you get control of the, the A long area, have a sniper and AR looking over you. If you're the bomb carrier, you kind of go, you creep up, you plant the bomb from here. And if your team has mid map control, there's not really any way for the defensive side to get you unless they kind of line up some nade spots, which I'll go into a little bit uh, later when I'm talking about the defensive side. The best part about planting A on this map uh, for the post plant is this this building right here. This is kind of the big power spot on the map where if you get bombed down, uh, it's almost unlosable more often than not because you can peek the bomb through the small cracks in here and you still have a lot of flexibility up here just looking through the cracks, busting open the walls, busting open the window. And you have so many different ways you can kind of take that fight on bomb site where the uh, diffuser can't really defend themselves too much. It's also very hard for the offense to, or the um, retaking team to get up here. They kind of have to go all the way through spawn because if they go up this way, it should be a pretty easy kill for you. More often than not, these walls will still be uh, intact. So it's kind of hard for them to kind of jump in this way because it, it does get a little wonky sometimes as well where it's hard to make the jump. And with the window as well, getting through there for some reason is just incredibly hard. Like you'll open the window, it kind of opens towards you, so it pushes you back. And then it's like, you kind of get stuck in that window sometimes just trying to mantle through. So if you are trying to retake, definitely just take the route all the way around and come up the stairs or kind of come through B side and flank. Because mantling up top, there, it, there's so many inconsistencies with it on this map. B on this map, it's more of a, uh, a late round bomb site. Teams will kind of work for A control the entire time. You can also maybe throw in like a late B hit, you know, someone kind of flank through. Once you make a lot of pressure on A, maybe get like a kill or two on the flank on the players playing top church. Because if you get top church control as well and get bombed down, it's so hard for the defensive team to do anything because there's too many angles from the clear out. They got to get control top church. They got to clear out your broken building. They got to clear out long A. They got to clear out mid. And you should just have an easy post plant setup from that point on. So as defenders on this map, you wanted the main things you want to be working for are mid map control and kind of contesting the A lane a little bit, but not too much. Since the offensive team beats you back there, usually it's better to 
just play back here, kind of hold like an off angle, you know, hope hope the offensive team while clearing out A tries to push all the way through and maybe give you a free pick. If you know someone's getting on bomb though, there's a bunch of different ways to nade it from back here. You don't really even have to line it up too much. I kind of just go jump, throw a nade. Pretty much freestyle every time and it always like lands on the bomb here. Don't really have too many issues with it. Um, test it yourself a little bit. But once you throw a few nades from back here, you'll kind of get the hang of it and learn how to relatively consistently land it on top of the bomb. So unless you have teammates here going for kind of like a, a counter push with some smokes, I don't recommend peeking it too much. If you have a sniper, you can maybe jump out, take a really quick shot and run away and hope you get one. But if you're kind of just going and peeking into it, you'll usually peek into someone already holding the angle beforehand. So it's not too wise to go for that peek. So defense, the main the main areas you want to hold are top church, gives you kind of visual all over mid map. You can bank some stuns off the walls here or here, just to make sure no one on offense kind of push up on your church. You're always gonna pretty much want someone in the bottom church as well, watching the cross to a bomb from the the attacking side of the uh, the U area over here, and also give yourself the option to kind of jump out, challenge mid alley, or push out and get mid map control. With how a heavy this map is on uh, offense, it also really opens up a lot of possibilities to flank on this map. It's a bit long of a route from your spawn. But if, you, if you're contesting mid enough on this map, you can kind of open up the flank for one of your teammates to kind of push through here, push through the window, and either push all the way around, which does take quite a bit of time, or probably the better move to kind of pinch and get control of the other team's top broken. Because on defense, if you do get control of top broken here, um, you know, good luck to the attacking side because they can't really get it down A and they get B, they, they have to push all the way through your spawn. I definitely enjoy Tuscan as one of the better S&D maps in this game. I probably rated around an 8 as well, just because of um, how A bombsite heavy it is. It's a really good map. Uh, I think offense gets a little bit too much control of the map at times. I wish it was a bit more defense oriented in that sense, but Tuscan definitely one of the better maps in the game. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Thank you for watching this episode of Coach's Corner. Once again, I'm Brian Saint. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode.